What's up, Internet? Sa PC World, sanay tayo na mahal mag-upgrade. We save up for upgrades, skip meals for upgrades, sell our body parts for upgrades. Keep that kidney inside your body where it belongs and watch this video instead where we dive into 6 upgrades which are less than 1,000 pesos but they will dramatically improve the quality of your life when you're using your computer. Plus, may isang bonus upgrade tayo at the end na medyo mahal, pero worth it na worth it pa rin siya. Sawa ka na ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder! Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, nagsisigi ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan! Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life! Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor! So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com now, this is my DAS keyboard. It's old AF, but it's sturdy. Binili ko nung di pa uso yung mga custom keyboards. And it has something that I use every day. I mean, aside from the keys, it's this knob which controls the volume. Whatever you're doing with your computer, whether you're a spreadsheet warrior, a video editor, a gamer, a streamer, at one point or another, you will need to adjust the volume. Even the most dedicated worker takes a break to watch YouTube once in a while. Now, there are lots of ways you can change the volume inside the program itself or through Windows. All of that is through software, usually through sliders. But the easiest way is to have an external hardware control. And a knob on your keyboard is fast, simple, and intuitive. This is not optional for me. I find it so useful that I would not consider any setup in the future that didn't have a volume control dial in easy reach. Some keyboards are like my DAS, which already have a knob built in, or you can pick up a standalone one, Namura. The cheapest I found on Lazada is 584 pesos. On Amazon, the cheapest is around $17. We're also supposed to be reviewing this one, which looks gloriously over the top, but we're still waiting to receive it. To keep things simple, I don't even need any other media controls. Play, pause, stop, next track, I don't need any of them. All of those are nice to have, but not essential. Now, I have access to a lot of different hardware thanks to the shop, so natatawa ako na one of the parts I really can't live without is a super simple volume control knob. The volume knob is hardware for your ears. Here's one for your eyes. A monitor light bar can help with direct light right on top of your desk, so if you need to leave notes for yourself or do some other writing work, the desk is well illuminated. I mean, this is not an essential thing, but it it looks pretty premium in fairness to Xiaomi. Um, yeah, and you basically just hang it on top here, on top of the monitor here. Um, so it will provide better light. Yeah, so on my desk area and things like that. So yeah, lighting is important to me, but not the aesthetic lighting that my brother Rafael, uh, <laughs> that my brother Rafael gravitates towards. Pero anecdotally, having a monitor light bar has also reduced eye strain for me. Before, with overhead lights on, my eyes would routinely get itchy and quite red in the corner of my eye after long periods on the computer. My eyes are not the best. Yung grado ko, mga 600 plus in each eye, and I've worn contact lenses since grade school. And these are the RGP lenses, the uncommon rigid gas permeable lenses, instead of the usual soft contact lenses. So I thought, ganun talaga ang buhay, my eyes are not that great, and they will really get red and itchy if I want to use my computer. But that doesn't happen anymore after I started using a monitor light bar. And the bar is not even on my primary monitor, it's on my secondary monitor, which is beside my main monitor. 
I think just having a lot of focused light very nearby to where I'm focusing helped my eyes out a lot. The light bar I use is from Xiaomi. It's powered by a USB, so you can plug it straight into your computer. It comes with a knob remote control, which intuitively controls light, intensity, and temperature, as well as on and off. The Xiaomi one is 1,600 pesos, but the cheapest one I found is way cheaper at only 435 pesos. A light bar doesn't seem immediately useful, but it has been a big quality of life improvement for me when I use my desktop. A monitor light bar is also one of my chief regrets as a reviewer. A while back, BenQ sent me a more expensive light bar which could fit onto my primary monitor which is 48 inches. I enjoyed it, reviewed it favorably, and then looked forward to using it for years. Because this Xiaomi light is already been alive for a Unfortunately, right after the review period, my then 2-year-old daughter wrecked it by repeatedly turning it on and off very fast. So, RIP BenQ light bar. Which I still miss, but I've been too cheap to buy a new one. So, so far, okay naman yung Xiaomi light bar for me. It's going strong and my eyes don't get red anymore. Many things lessen as we grow older, like our once fast computers are now slow in comparison to the latest gen. One thing though that definitely increases over time is the amount of data you want to save. Old files, pictures, videos, save game files, those things add up over the years. Now, you could pay Google, Apple, Amazon, Dropbox, or some other service for cloud storage. And the cloud does have its advantages. But those services are relatively expensive and they get more expensive, not cheaper, over time as you need to store more and more data. That's why I like using the opposite of the cloud. It's local and it's cheap. If being on the cloud is like having a big USB connected to the internet, here is another big USB which is connected only to your computer. This is an external hard drive enclosure. Super easy to use. If you've ever used a console, you'll know how to use it. Slip off the cover, slide in the hard drive, put the cover back on, connect the USB and power cables, and you are good to go. Simple to set up, and this way you can have access to different hard drives since they are so easy to swap out. A lot of PC users have a lot of old hard drives saved around from their old builds, which they can't use anymore because the current ATX cases are mahina na or you only get a few number of 3.5 inch base in the modern ATX cases. Or maybe you just don't want to clutter up your new PC with these old drives. Enter the enclosure. Access only the drive you need and only when you want it. It marries the convenience of a USB with the larger capacities of traditional storage. The first year cost of Google Drive is 889 pesos and you only get 100 gigabytes. In comparison, the cheapest 3.5 inch enclosure I could find is 450 pesos, although I am using one from Ugreen which is around 960 pesos. That's just the enclosure, so you will still need to buy at least one hard drive to use it with, but if you've been into computers for any length of time, for sure you have some old hard drives that are just lying around. Put those old hard drives to use and stop giving the cloud companies more of your money by simply getting an external hard drive enclosure. It's not pretty, it's not sexy, it doesn't have AI, but it is so useful. Old hard drives are great for storage. The 3.5 inch HDDs still offer the most storage for your money. What they are not great for is running programs. They're slow. That's why the longest running piece of advice on this channel is get yourself an SSD. Doesn't matter what kind of build or budget, always get yourself an SSD, even if just for the OS, as they are so much faster compared to a traditional hard drive. Plus, ramdam na ramdam mo yung bilis na yon. It's a significant quality of life improvement that you can see and feel when your PC boots up so much faster if you're running the OS from an SSD. There are lots of options for SSDs and the technical explanation on why they are faster and smaller is also interesting, but I won't rehash all of that here. I've talked about that already in past videos. Bottom line, even a SATA SSD, which is the cheapest type of SSD, will be a big boost to your computing life. 
the cheapest 128GB SATA SSD I could find was around 620 pesos, but I do encourage getting at least 512 gigabytes so you have breathing room for your OS and a couple of other programs. A cheap 512 gigabyte would probably run you around 2,000 pesos. In the olden days, the only peripherals you hooked up to your PC were your keyboard and mouse and you were good to go. Nowadays, so many other things attach externally to your computer. We've already covered some of them in this video. If your mobile is entry-level or mid-range, you might not have enough ports for everything you need plugged in. Actually, kahit na high-end yung motherboard mo, it's possible to still run out of ports. And even if you have the ports you need, they may be a pain to reach. Sobrang hassle na pupunta ka pa sa likod ng computer to locate the specific type of port that you need. My build uses a Thermaltake Core P3 case, so the back of the motherboard is actually to the side. And you'd think that would make it easier to plug things in, so it's essentially like having a front-facing connector on a case, pero angled to the side. But the ports are still a pain in the ass to reach. My mobile was pretty good when I got it. It's a Gigabyte X570S, but even that one only still has one USB-C port and everything these days is USB-C. That's why I've started using a port hub. This one has nine ports, four USB, and five standard types. It's great. This is from Mini Soporu, and it's such a lifesaver. No more blindly plugging cables in the back. No more disconnecting one USB-C device to make way for the next USB-C device. Again, so simple, but a big quality of life improvement. The Mini Sapporo Hub is fancy. It even tells you how many watts the charging device is using. We'll have a full review on it this month. But you don't need fancy and expensive to enjoy this upgrade. Ugreen has a 4-port USB-C hub for around 750 pesos. You can find even cheaper online with minimal effort. And you can position the hub so that it's very close to you. So you can plug in things without having to stand up anymore. And that's a real winner for convenience. Going back to the start of this list, it's only very recently that I realized that I can't live without a volume knob, even though I've been using one for years now. But what I have known for a very long time is that I can't live without a wireless mouse. My mouse has been wireless for maybe more than 20 years now. I, I can't remember the last time I had a wired mouse. Personally, I've gone wireless because I hate the tug of the mouse cord, the resistance and the weight it has, which you can feel sometimes when you're moving the mouse around. And having a wireless mouse makes for a cleaner desktop overall as it's one less cord that you need to worry about. A wireless mouse is also more versatile. I use my ROG Harpy Ace with my desktop via RF receiver. And I also use it with my laptop like right now by switching it to Bluetooth. And I'm using it right now to use the Elgato teleprompter I'm using to shoot this video. A wireless mouse is easy to set up and the more you use it, the more you see its advantages over its corded brethren. Admittedly, my use case and tastes are a bit extreme, definitely on the nerdy side. But my wife, who is not techie at all and doesn't care about specs or having a feature just for the sake of having a feature, kahit siya, she also prefers wireless mice. She doesn't like the clutter of the cord and likes that she can take the wireless mouse with her anywhere without the wire dragging or taking up space in a bag. She just finds the wireless mouse more convenient. Again, quality of life improvement. Now, the mouse I'm using is the Haroji Harpy Ace Aim Lab Edition because I do game and while I'm not obsessed about polling rates, I do need a responsive mouse. But you don't need to go that bonkers. The cheapest wireless mouse I found on Lazada was less than 100 pesos. Even a basic Logitech wireless mouse is under 150 pesos. Last one, guys. The first six products I've mentioned, I use all of them. And from my experience, they've really made using my desktop a lot easier and more fun to use. I universally recommend everyone get those items, especially because they're such bang for your buck. It's a jump in your quality of life for minimal cost. This last one though is not minimal cost. And I also learned that not everyone agrees with me that this is a universal upgrade. And I'm talking about a larger monitor. 
I've always said screen real estate is super important for all PC users. The more screen you have, the more productive you'll be. And on the gaming side, the more immersive the games will be. My main monitor is 48 inches, and then I have a 27-incher and a 24-incher as secondary monitors. And finally, a 42-inch TV, which I also use as a monitor. So I have a lot of screen space and I have a lot of videos talking about why this is super useful for me. Lately though, I've gotten comments that have made me rethink that universal advice. Some people apparently just don't like size. Like, it's not a question of budget or desktop space. They just don't like the bigger size for personal reasons. So, I'll, I'll have to think about that. And that might take a while as I'm a slow thinker. But while I'm thinking about it, I do stand behind my general recommendation that bigger is better for monitors. If you think your monitor is big already, then get him a friend. Two monitors, or three, or four, are always better than one. For productivity, having a lot of screen and real estate can't be beat. If you're worried about the size of the primary monitor, then getting a secondary monitor might be the route you want to take. Monitors are generally expensive, but they don't need to be for secondary monitors. Buy second hand, use an old TV, get one with very low specs. For a secondary monitor, you only need it to do one job, display. <laughs> you don't need high resolutions, fast refresh rates, color gamut, etc. You just need it to display. And with some luck, you can usually find a cheap screen or free if you already have an old flat screen TV. And those are already very much up to the task of being a secondary monitor. Everything I mentioned in this video, I use daily and I genuinely find them to be super useful, especially considering how cheap they can be to implement. Yes, it's fun to talk about power connector melting GPUs and CPUs which run so hot you could literally fry an egg on one. But consider first quality of life upgrades which don't cost a lot but have a large impact on how you enjoy your computer. Thanks for watching.